Hi, and welcome to another Student Branding TV. My name is Kay Dworkin. And I'm Amber Ray Lamke. And uh, it sounds like this week uh, we're just kind of getting a feel for, you know, kind of the round two of getting together and doing this, uh, you know, playing off of one another. Um, so, you know, Amber, anything new and exciting? Um, Halloween's coming up. That's a pretty exciting holiday for uh, college students. But, um, yeah, to this week we're going to be talking a little bit about working in college and whether or not that's a yay or a nay. Um, so, Kate, if you want to... Yeah, I mean, you know, one of my big things was that, you know, when I was in college, I uh, was really focused because I was on a three-year track. I decided from the beginning that I was going to compress my, my education from a four-year track to three um, and as I kind of got closer and closer to the end, I decided that I wanted to work instead of doing internships. Um, so I ended up uh, hooking up with a small dot-com company by the name of GoDaddy in 2004, so way back before they started doing all their Super Bowl ads. Um, and I started working the overnight shift, and I took a job that was significantly under my skill set. Um, you know, I took a standard kind of technical support job um, and hustled through that in order to uh, get in with a company, build in some rapport, get to know some people, get to understand the culture. And as a result, when I graduated, they offered me a great position inside the legal staff, inside the, the spam and abuse department specifically. Um, Amber, I know you had some amazing internships, like legitimate internships, where it was a you know kind of frame. But go ahead and, and, and fill in uh, some of the folks about uh, that. Well, for me, I was I know Kate he just totally killed it throughout college and you know finished it in three years. But for me, I was um, I was just going to enjoy every day um, and do it in four and make sure that I really got a enriching and fun and, you know, but still educational college experience. Um, I, my the internship that really stands out obviously to me is I, I was the campus rep for Apple. And basically I worked about 15 hours a week, just evangelizing the brand, um, throwing concerts, events, food drives. And I mean, it was by far probably one of the best jobs I can remember. Um, totally added to the quint quintessential college experience and uh, helped me to meet a lot of people. And obviously, you know, it's a great brand to have um, leaving you with college going into the real world. So, Yeah. So, I mean, you know, how did that play into your kind of next steps after college? I mean, was that a huge thing on your resume that, that you know, as you were applying to jobs and trying to figure out what you wanted to do, uh, did people look at that really positively? Oh, definitely. Um, well, one, the Apple brand, and also just, I mean, I was trying to get into the marketing and advertising world, and, you know, that's pretty, you know, top-notch brand, and I ended up working for a, a word-of-mouth marketing agency, and I was essentially evangelizing the brand, and so I really understood the word-of-mouth proponent. So I think, it, for me, it really, the experience helped me understand what I truly enjoyed doing and what I was, you know, really good at. So, um, I think the only way to really figure out what it is you want to do is to just get out there and try and to try new experiences. So if I wouldn't have, you know, had that experience, I don't think I would have had such a grasp on word of mouth marketing and, you know, really using online technologies to enhance offline events and to, you know, enhance relationships with people. So, um, just having that experience definitely helped direct me in where I wanted to go. And that's, and that's really interesting because it seems like you got that from the real life experience and I actually did that more and more from informational interviews where I was able to do that in my freshman year especially where you know I called the companies that I wanted to work for and said, hey, this is the deal, this is what I want to do, I want to talk with somebody you know, and see what steps I need to do in order to get there. Um, and I've had a buddy of mine who recently just started his MBA at Georgetown and uh, yeah, he's super stoked about that and he's trying to find that kind of fit and that kind of information about what he wants to do when he gets done with school. The informational interviews though, you got to just ask, right? I mean, that's a big thing is, is knowing the right kind of companies that you want to work for. And sometimes you don't. So you ask just anybody who will give you the time of day, right? I mean, I sat there and I spoke with a lot of different publishing houses because I thought I wanted to be a book marketer. I mean, you know, you may or may not be able to see it behind me, the gigantic stack of books. And, and those are the ones that I just kept. I mean, there are a lot of other ones that I read and then, you know, either gave away or, you know, sold or did something with. Uh, and, you know, I really thought I was going to be a, a marketing publicist for books. And to that point, that's something that I wish I would have done more of. Um, and thinking back to me in college, what prevented me from doing that was, I think, probably just being afraid and not knowing what to ask, not knowing what to say when I called and who to ask for. So, I mean, do you have any tips on 
what people should be thinking about when they make those calls? First and foremost, you know, what I found, which is really interesting, and I think we both kind of stated in our last videos was acknowledge the fact that you're really young, right? People want to help you and just ask for help and say, hey, you know what, I'm looking for 15, 20 minutes with a, a product manager, right? And some of the best questions that I actually asked in order to get an idea for what the job actually presented was, uh, you know, what's your day to day like? You know, what do you what do you do on a Monday morning at 8 a.m.? Are, are you at work? Or are you, you know, do you have the flexibility to show up at 1030 because you've got, you know, a lunch meeting or, you know, a breakfast meeting or, you know, you want to work out? I mean, you know, it was very interesting for me to sit there and get an idea on the culture there. Um, the other big question that I always found to be very, very interesting was, you know, what is your vertical path? right? Is there a direct line or is it, you know, hey, there's there's one guy and that one guy is going to be there until he's done and or, and or walks away on his own? You talked a lot about what to ask, which those are those are really actually helpful insights. Um, but what about getting to the point of getting information on you? Like how do you making that happen? Two major ways and, and one of them I didn't have at my disposal because it just didn't exist, right? First and foremost, and probably the easiest way is to get involved in LinkedIn right sit there and, and friend find you know if you can find them on Twitter even better because then that's kind of a non-professional you can just approach someone um, and you know what if they happen to follow you back then you send a DM if not call out to them you know send an at reply and say hey you know I'm interested in, in what you're doing can you find 20 minutes to talk um, the other way that I typically found it was I am absolutely fearless regarding cold calls which is a heck of a skill to have, especially when you're not a salesman, when you're not trying to pitch somebody on the other end of the line. So I'm willing to pick up a phone and call you know, the general line and keep pressing zero or keep pressing star until I get a receptionist who I can actually talk to. Mm -hmm. um, so that was always the interesting part was, you know, hey, okay, let me talk with you know, somebody who I was able to find mentioned it in an article somewhere. And if mm -hmm. it was nothing more than saying, hey, you know what? Uh, you know, I read the article in the Wall Street Journal and you guys said, you know, that you were looking for this kind of person going forward or you have this direction. You know, can I talk with somebody about that? And it was very interesting because most of the time those high level folks who were being interviewed were more than happy to, uh, you know, push me down the line kind of and, and talk with somebody closer to where I would have been either coming in or would have been in five years. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was very, very interesting and, and, and worthwhile. So, I mean, does that more directly answer your question on the yeah. how? Definitely. Um, okay. I, I mean, you know, I think for the people out there who aren't necessarily, you know, fearless when it comes to cold calling, because I know that can be kind of a scary thing to do. Yeah. I think it's also just remembering that. I mean, what's there's either you'll get someone on the phone or you won't, and they're not going to know who you are either way. Yeah. So either they'll help you out or they won't. So you really have nothing to lose in making well, the phone calls. At the end of the day, though, right? If you've got the right kind of personal brand out there, like we've talked about, and what a lot of our, our bloggers have talked about over at StudentBranding.com, um, you know. If you've got the right brand and people can do research on you very quickly, plug mm -hmm. you into Google and see that, you know what, you actually, you know, are caring and creating content, they're very likely to make time for you because that's a space that they don't have an expertise in most of the time. Right. So uh, it's definitely one of those things where creating a brand and being a brand on your own first can actually help you get the kind of access that you want, which gets you the information and, and kind of all dominoes from there, which is why I love being a part of this entire uh, you know, kind of movement that we're trying to start here with the blog and, and the video here. So, so I, I think like in college students, something as simple as, you know, a Tumblr or posture absolutely set up a blog in five minutes and think about, you know, write about what you want or yeah. write for your future employer essentially. Yeah. I mean, Amber, anything else to add to this? I kind of felt like this is like me rambling for 10 minutes. more. Than no, no. Yeah. Really just feedback. I think put yourself out there. Um, you know, I, become, create an identity on the web and just do something that scares you every day or challenge yourself every day. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. As always, you can see us at uh, studentbranding.com. You can email Amber or I directly at studentbrandingtv at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, thanks again for the time and uh, you guys have a great week. Bye. See ya.